Hey guys, it's Liberty and it's Julie and we're from the Framingham Fuller Flyers after school program and today we're going to show you how to avoid scams. So I hope you enjoy with our Let's get amazing acting. The video. I, go shopping. I heard there's this really good site called like Romway or something. Really? Yeah. Let's go. Those are some really cute outfits. Really? You think so? Yeah, I like that shirt. But if I add all these up, it ends up to be a lot of money, actually. Let's see if I can find a promo code. Yeah, I heard promo codes are good. Okay, let me go on my emails, because I think you should send me some there. Wait, wait, what's under that? A Walmart surprise. Congratulations, no you are one click away to claim your $1,000 Walmart gift card. Who sent that to her? Will she actually get $1,000? Is it even safe? Stop. Why can't I click it? Because it's a scam. How do you know it's a scam? Look at it. If it looks too good to be true, it probably is. So scams can ask you for your social security number, bank account info, where you live, where you're from, anything All more personal. Personal information. Yeah. And that can be really dangerous because they can get money from you. Some of them might even show up to your address. So you always have to be careful with the information you're putting into your computer. Because it can become really scary really fast. So you always have to be careful with what like online stores you're shopping at and make sure they're secure to shop at. And if you ever get emails from a emailer that you don't know or it comes in your junk mail, always know that it might be a little sketchy because it's not in your actual inbox. And it could be signs of a scam. In the next picture, we're gonna show you guys some common types of scams. The first one is falsely representing health organizations. Scammers posing as health authorities, such as the WHO or CDC, may offer cures tests, or other COVID-19 information. The second one is websites selling fraudulent products. Sites may offer hand sanitizer, face masks, or other in-demand products that never arrive. The third one is posing as government sources. Some scams claim to issue updates and payments on behalf of the IRS or local government tax authority. The fourth one is Fraudulent financial offers. Scammers may pose as banks, investors, or debt collectors with offers designed to steal financial information. And the fifth one is fake nonprofit donation requests. Requests for COVID-19 donation to nonprofit hospitals or other organizations should be checked carefully. Um, just be careful what you're doing online. Don't allow your information to get put on the internet without you knowing that it's a secure website. That's all we have for this week. Come back next week for more. Bye, guys. Bye.